Okay, the third question I got back was, um, what are the best preventative aging practices? Um, so say, what are the best foods to add into your diet for anti-aging or supplements? Sure. Well, I have, I have several thoughts on this. One thing I would say is let's talk about what causes aging, and that's typically going to be foods high in sugar. And so really getting a lot of the sugar-rich foods and grains, you know, I'm not a big fan of especially our processed grains that so many people consume today, the white bread, the wheat bread, the processed rices. So really getting those things out of the diet I think are a big deal. In terms of foods that reduce aging, or overall aging symptoms. Uh, I think most of us know that berries are fantastic, blueberries and raspberries. These contain antioxidants known as polyphenols, bioflavonoids. Blueberries actually contain resveratrol, uh, which is great for anti-aging. So berries contain more antioxidants than any food group. Yeah. So getting more berries in your diet would be number one. Number two are herbs, specifically uh, things like cinnamon, ginger, turmeric, just adding more herbs to your, when you're cooking, adding more herbs to your food. For instance, um, one of the things that I'm going to be eating for dinner tonight, we're doing bison burgers here at the house, but I'll take, I'll, I'll put a bunch of turmeric in there. I'll put cumin, I'll put onion and garlic powder, or actually we'll probably do fresh onion and garlics right in the burger. Yeah. So if you can add more of those herbs into your diet, it's great. Also, you know, when I do uh, morning smoothies, I almost always put cinnamon in there. I put some ginger uh, in there as well, which yeah. tastes really, really fantastic, especially if you're doing like a, a peach or banana smoothie. So we'll throw those in there. So Getting more of those herbs are also very important. And then, you know, more more raw foods. I think so many people are consuming cooked foods today. We need to get more raw in our diet. And the reason why raw foods are so important is they're full of enzymes. They support digestion. And that's another thing that's a pretty, pretty big deal to me. And I want to mention this too. If you're looking at anti-aging supplements, there are compounds called adaptogenic herbs. And adaptogenic herbs are known because they help your body adapt and deal with stress. And stress really is the number one thing that's going to cause you to age faster. High levels of stress increase your cortisol levels. Cortisol levels are, or high cortisol is really known as uh, your aging hormones versus another hormone called human growth hormone, which is something that's increased when you do weightlifting exercise or interval training. Uh, that's known as your more of your anti-aging hormone. Mm -hmm. But in order to reduce cortisol, taking specific adaptogenic herbs like ashwagandha, rhodiola, ginseng, maca, these are all herbs that are very, very powerful at lowering the effects of stress. And so it's not something to where you're going to take it once and you're like, I'm, I look I'm 20 years thing. younger. Yay. You know, but it's, it, it, these herbs over periods of years, if you're taking them consistently, yeah. definitely have a big impact on causing you to age slower, keeping those cortisol levels lower. And also, they're natural energy boosters yeah. that aren't stimulants like a caffeine. And so if somebody's looking for an anti-aging supplement, looking for a supplement that does have some of those things in it is a great thing. And I think there's some green formulas out there that probably have these as well, that have things like I mentioned earlier, like chlorella, and may have blueberries, and may have something like ashwagandha in it. Finding a superfood powder that you can put in your morning smoothie every day is a really simple way to kind of follow some of those anti-aging. Aging, aging tips. Absolutely. I love my green powders and they go into every smoothie that I make because I see it as my smoothie is the vehicle for yep. promoting health and wellness within each and every single cell. So yep. I always think, how can I get the most amount of nutrition in my day? And my smoothie is the answer because I can throw in maca, bee pollen, spirulina, chlorella, greens powders, you name it, it goes in there. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Um, what is what is you what do you think are the top common misconceptions or myths around health and well being that you're forever clearing up? Like what's your top two? My top two. Well I've got a lot, but let, let me let me think about this. What are my, my top two? You know, he, here's my number one by far is a lot of people think that fat is bad or that fat makes you fat. Yeah. Here's the truth of the matter. And again, this is for men and this is big for women too. Fat is so important. 60% of your brain and your nervous system are made up of fat hormones. In order for your hormones to be balanced, you need yeah. fat in your body. And one of the things that I teach my patients when it comes to burning fat faster is you want to help your hormones work for you and not against you. What happens today is a lot of women 
consume a moderate amount of protein, they try and do low fat, and they try and they end up doing high carbohydrates. And what happens is if you're consuming a lot of carbohydrates over time, and I'm talking about whole grains for the most part, when you're consuming a lot of whole grains and then large amounts of fruit on top of that, what that does is is it causes your estrogen levels to increase, which long term, this is going to cause your body to store belly fat and also increase your cellulite. And so one of the most important things that you can do in helping your hormones and burning fat is lowering your overall carb intake and increasing your healthy fat and your protein and fiber. Those are really the three things that are going to help you burn fat and lose weight, protein, fiber, and then specific types of fat. Now, not all fat, but there are there's a type of fat in coconut called medium chain fatty acids. Yeah. that your body can burn for energy. And a couple other fats that are overlooked, or at least this one fat is overlooked, are short-chain fatty acids. We're going to be seeing a lot of popularity with short-chain fats here in the future. And short-chain fats are the sort of fats that are found in raw dairy products. If you buy raw cheeses or go and buy kefir, um, you know, with all the probiotics in it. But these have short-chain fats known as butyrate. And L-butyrate is important for hormones and for your digestive health. So I think if someone's really looking at what are the best fats for me to consume, well, pasture dairy like butter, raw butter is fantastic, or kefir or yogurt. The other thing is coconut products, and then nuts and seeds or products that are high in omega-3 fatty acids. Those are the three fats women want to be getting and men are omega-3s, short-chain fats, and medium fat. And so what I do is I try and get all three of those in my morning smoothie to where I put some kefir in there, yeah. I put in some chia seeds or flax seeds, and then I put in a little bit of coconut milk, and I get those different fats in my diet every single day. But again, if you really do want to lose weight and burn fat, it really is important to get more of these fats, and it also helps with balancing out hormones. So again, Fat is not bad. Fat is fantastic for your health and can be fantastic for weight loss only if you're consuming the right type of fat. And again, get the grains and carbs out. Yeah. And second, let me think about this. My second biggest myth that I'm constantly having to expose would probably be what the right type of exercise is. Okay. You know, I my background is as a soccer player and a triathlete. So I used to do a lot of long distance cardio, and I really don't do as much anymore. Now I still like to go out and ride my bike and go for a swim, and so I do a bit. But we found that there are specific types of exercise that are much more effective than other types. And you know, I went to the gym yesterday, and I walked in there in the afternoon, and everybody was on an elliptical machine or a treadmill or a spin bike, and, and people do a lot of cardio, I mean a whole lot of cardio, and the truth of the matter is doing a lot of long distance cardio is not the most effective way to burn fat. In fact, there's a great study out of Wales University that they did there over in Europe uh, where you guys are at, and they found that women who did got on a spin bike, they actually had two groups. One group did 40 minutes of, of spinning at a moderate pace. Another group of women did 12 seconds on and 8 seconds off. But basically, they did these what I call burst training. They went hard for about 10 seconds, easy for 10. Hard. So it went back and forth. They burned six times more body fat in the same amount of time as the other group. And so just to say this, if you're looking to burn fat and increase that anti-aging hormone I mentioned earlier, human growth hormone, which will also lower cortisol levels, if you can train by doing a mixture of weight training and interval cardio, if again, if you exercise doing your cardio like a sprinter rather than a marathon runner, yeah. that is the most effective way to burn fat and boost those anti-aging hormones to naturally balance hormones in the body. So again, the type of exercise and getting more healthy fat in the diet, those are probably two of the biggest myths I, uh, you know, I, I answer all the time. Awesome. Good. Thank you. I needed to clear that up because I think I have so many myths that come in. I'm just like, oh, that's not true. That's not true. I just want <laughs> right. to just clear that all up for everybody. Oh, um, yeah. And also, don't you think coconut oil is pretty good for helping you lose fat, losing fat and weight as well? Oh yeah, I mean coconut oil is the main oil that uh, that I use every single day for cooking, especially. Mm -hmm. So we use coconut milk in yeah. smoothies. I use coconut oil um, in all my cooking. Also, you know, whenever I I have a recipe that I do a few times a week, it's for coconut chicken tenders. And what I do is I have a little bit of gluten free gluten free flour, and then I buy the really the shredded coconut flakes. Yeah. And so I actually use that as kind of my breading whenever I fry up any chicken tenders in coconut oil. But again, doing coconut flakes is great uh, as a breading. You can do coconut flour 
in different recipes. And then when I make my own trail mix, I use the coconut flakes along with, you know, almonds and raisins and goji berries and that sort of thing. So I use a lot of coconut. Huge fan. I love coconut.